Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to show you how to replace a motor on a power wheelchair. In this case, we have a Golden Technologies Compass Power Wheelchair, but the process is pretty similar for most power wheelchairs. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention a few things. Number one, if you want a copy of our free product catalog, just go to our website, mobilitydirect.com, click on the green button at the top of every page that says free catalog, fill out that simple short form, and one will be in your mailbox within one to two weeks tops. I also want to say that if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're automatically going to be entered into our monthly giveaway raffle. That's right, once a month we give away a free mobility product to one lucky subscriber. You're already here, it takes no time at all, just hit that subscribe button and you could be the next lucky winner. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the motor swap now and what we need to do first is remove the battery compartment covers, it's pretty straightforward to remove those shroud covers. The next thing you're going to need is a socket wrench to remove the axle bolt that holds the tire in place. Now be careful when you remove that tire. There are a couple of things that are going to fall out like the bolt, a washer, and there's an axle key which allows the wheel to actually move in rotation with the transaxle motor when the axle is spinning. So if you don't put that back, make sure you keep it, don't lose it, it's very important. So here's the new motor assembly and we're showing you that there's four mounting holes for these bolts that run right through the frame itself where the motor gets mounted to. You're going to need an Allen key or an Allen key bit and you'll probably need both. An Allen key can be used for the two bolts that are on the bottom. We just removed one of them and we're showing you the bolt here. It does have a lock nut and a washer attached to the bolt so make sure you don't lose that and when you go to replace the motor you'll want to put everything back in the same orientation. Now for the two bolts that are up on the top part of the frame it helps to get a allen key bit instead of just using an allen key that's a, a manual allen key because of the angle in which you'll need to access those bolts. It also helps to remove the battery wire harness that's in the way so that you can get in there with your driver and the allen key bit to remove those two bolts that are located up high. So that's what we're doing right now. It's quite a process. All in all, this whole process took about an hour to complete because it's a very compact design on the inside of the chair where you have to access some of these bolts and screws. So as you can see here, we have an Allen key bit on a driver and we're removing those top bolts. So once you have all four of those bolts removed, uh, the motor is technically disconnected. However, there is another step you're going to have to take to remove the motor itself, a few steps actually, and we're going to show you now. So on top of the motor, you're going to see the suspension assembly uh, that basically allows the front caster wheels to kind of sway and uh, give it a smooth ride. You're going to have to remove two bolts that work with that assembly, and we're showing you here that you do need an Allen key towards the inside and then a socket wrench on top to remove one of them on that silver sliding plate there. So remove that carefully, make sure you keep track of all the bolts, nuts, screws, washers, lock nuts, so that you know exactly where to put them when you rinse and repeat as you're putting it back together. Now you'll also notice that there is a tubed washer underneath that silver plate which I just took out. You don't want to lose that, the bolt's going to slide through there and that washer is definitely something you need to have so don't lose that washer. So now we're moving to the other bolt that works with the suspension uh, assembly and it just takes a socket wrench. You go from the inside part, as you can see I have the wrench underneath uh, the assembly while it's tilted on its side and you just have to use that, Allen, that wrench rather to remove that bolt. Uh, it's actually a nut, I'm sorry. You have to remove the nut and then it's going to allow you to swing that plate upwards and out of the way just enough to be able to have that motor clear it and you can remove the motor that way. Now there is one other thing. The brake assembly lever which I'm displaying here is screwed on with two screws to the electromagnetic brake assembly and you're going to have to remove that lever in order for the motor to squeeze on out of that assembly and, and the mounting hole that it slides through. So that's what we're doing now and this is probably the most difficult step of the process. I recommend getting a set of needle nose pliers and an allen key because one of the screws that holds the electromagnetic brake lever with the yellow lever, um, one of those screws has a nut on it. 
The other one just is a screw. So it's an Allen key head screw for both of them, and one of them has a bolt on it. So you use the needle nose pliers to hold that bolt, and then use the Allen key to twist off that bolt and nut. And the second one's just a screw, as you can see, I just removed that second one. And now that brake lever um, bracket and the brake lever itself are free. I can remove it, and that's what it takes to be able to remove the motor. It's got a very small clearance and you will need to disconnect the motor main uh, wire harness which is zip tied to the frame so I removed the two zip ties and now that everything is disconnected you can see that the motor is sliding out. You do have to shimmy it out a little bit and again that suspension plate needs to be completely up as far as it goes so you can clear that little hole that the, the motor slides right through. So now that we have the old motor removed, we're going to install the new motor. Just go ahead and feed the main motor wire harness through the hole, and you will have to shimmy that motor assembly in there so that it rests just as it should into the mounting area. Now you want to leave it tilted a little bit um, because you will need to reinstall that brake assembly lever that we mentioned was very difficult to remove. Installing it's not any easier, so be prepared. You will probably sweat a little bit like I did. Uh, so you want to have that motor kind of tilted to the side and line up that brake lever assembly so that you can get that screw and the nut in there and also get the secondary screw in there with that Allen key. Again, this is not easy. It probably took me a good 15 to 20 minutes just to get this part done. So we're going to fast forward through all this because it is a very lengthy process. And while I'm doing this, I want to mention a few things. Number one, the first Wednesday of every single month, on our YouTube channel, we're doing a live video where we answer technical questions. So if you or someone you know owns a mobility product, has to be a powered mobility product, like a power wheelchair, a mobility scooter, a lift chair, a vehicle lift, you can join us the first Wednesday of every month, usually around 12 or 1 or 2 o'clock, and we will be doing a live video answering live questions that you have about your product that needs technical troubleshooting or assistance. You don't have to be a customer. It's a great way to figure out what might be wrong with your powered mobility product. So I encourage you to join us and, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed so you can get notified when that live stream video is going to be released. Usually it's between 12 and 2 o'clock. So now that we have everything uh, kind of connected as far as the brake lever goes, I'm just reinstalling the motor, putting all four bolts and making sure that they're nice and tight for the motor assembly itself. And then moving on to install the nut and the bolt for the suspension assembly that we were talking about earlier. So you can see now uh, I'm just finishing up the, the main four bolts that hold the motor onto the frame. And then I'm going to move on to installing the bolt and the washer that the bolt goes through which i'm doing now for the suspension swing assembly plate there and uh, the nut that goes on the other side from the inside so just make sure you reinstall all the bolts all the washers all the lock nuts everything the same way and what we're doing now is installing some batteries and because we are one of the few providers out there that offers lithium battery upgrades we have a pair of uh, 23 amp hour lithium batteries which are super lightweight they come with an 11 year warranty they give you double the mileage on a full charge these batteries are phenomenal they are backed by an excellent 11 year warranty so if you want to learn more about lithium batteries not only is it going to make your product super light it's going to give you more range sometimes more speed and of course you don't have to replace the batteries nearly as much. These batteries last two to three times longer than the traditional batteries that the units come with, which are lead acid batteries. So lithium batteries are great. You can call our parts department or visit our website, go to the parts section, click on batteries. We have a whole section for lithium battery upgrades. You can call our parts department to see uh, what batteries would be compatible with your unit. And we'd be happy to help you there. So once you have the uh, batteries installed, Install the tire that was removed. In order to remove the brake uh, and the motor assembly, you would need to remove the tire. So we're installing the tire now, and as you can see, I'm installing that key which locks into the tr uh, to the axle. It's a magnetic key, and there's a little slot on the inside of the rim where that key slides right into. And that's how the wheel is allowed to lock onto the axle. So when the axle's spinning, when you use the joystick to move the chair, it's going to lock in and rotate the tire. Otherwise, the wheel is just going to spin freely 
and you're not going to get any traction when you hit the uh, joystick to move the chair. So make sure you don't lose that magnetic little key that attaches to the axle. Um, and again, just reinstall the washer, the bolt, get everything nice and snug. And what we're doing now is we're just grabbing the cable for the joystick to test it out to see if when we turn it on it still gives you that fault code where it beeps seven times. So it's got a swing away joystick. We're just swinging out of the way so we can connect the joystick cable before we install the seat and put the panels back on just to make sure it works. Realized here I didn't have the brakes engaged so I had to just turn the brakes on. These units have automatic brakes as you know. So I engaged the brake levers, reset power, and as you can see the unit is now moving as it should. Before it wouldn't move at all. It would just give you that fault code error and it would not move. So that's it. We successfully fixed the unit. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Before you go, please don't forget to visit our website mobilitydirect.com and click on the green button that says free catalog to claim your very own free catalog. Just fill out the short form and it should get to you in about a week or two max. I just want to take this time to personally thank each and every one of you for watching this video. We couldn't do it without our subscribers. So if you like our content, please go to YouTube, search for Mobility Direct, and subscribe to our channel. You can enable notifications. That way you'll get notified whenever we release new videos. We're constantly making great videos. We have tons of playlists that range from repair videos, unboxing videos, research and development, and much, much more. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and ask any questions in the comments section below. We love hearing from our audience, whether it's feedback, comments, or suggestions for a new video topic. We love hearing from you. None of this could be done without our loyal audience. We hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching again. Have a great day.